Welcome back to another Godot recipe. In this video, we'll be talking about how to make homing missiles that will chase your player wherever they may go. All right, let's get started. So here's how we're going to start. We're going to assume you've got some sort of character that you can control. I'm going to use this airplane and that you have some kind of enemy that can fire projectiles. So in this setup, I've got some turrets that can fire projectiles. They're instancing them and aiming at a target. And these are what I would call dumb projectiles. They just travel in a straight line and expire after a certain amount of time. And if you need help setting up these things, you can see some of my other tutorials. For this one, we'll be focusing on taking these dumb projectiles and turning them into homing missiles that will chase me no matter what direction I go in. So here's our missile or bullet. We're using this sprite, which is from Kenny's top-down tower defense art pack, which I'll link to in the comments below. And this is an area 2D with our sprite, of course, which is taken from the art pack, a collision shape 2D, and a timer called lifetime, which will let us expire this, uh, this bullet after a certain amount of time. And let's look at the script real quick. Again, this is the dumb script. So we have a speed variable, which controls how fast this goes. We have a start function, which we call when we instance it, which just gives us a transform so we can set its position and rotation and have it travel in the direction it's pointing. And then our physics process is going to update the velocity based on the acceleration, which in our case is going to be zero right now, so it's constant, and updates the position. And then I've connected the body entered signal so that if it hits a any kind of body like the player, it will delete itself. And if it we've also connected the lifetimes timeout, which will delete the missile when the time runs out. So how do we turn this into a heat seeking missile? Well, it really boils down to the acceleration. We're gonna want to use our acceleration. And remember the definition of acceleration is a change in velocity. So by altering our acceleration, we can change the direction and speed of our projectile. And we don't want that to necessarily be instantaneous, which is going to look a little artificial. So we're going to apply a variable to this. I'm going to call this the steer force. And that's going to be how quickly this projectile can turn, right? The higher this number, the more quickly it can make a turn. So if you want a missile that has to make a big wide turn to come around you, or if you want it to turn really sharply, you can adjust that property. And then we're also going to add a target, which if you leave it null, this will continue to be a dumb bullet. But if we pass in a target, which our turrets are going to do, we can add that assigned target so we know we have something to chase. So let's look at a diagram to see how this is going to work. So here's my projectile and the blue vector here is its current velocity. It's currently heading in that direction. But the target is over here. So the projectile wants to go straight towards the target which is this red vector. And the difference between those, desired minus current, gives us this green arrow. This is how much we want our velocity to change. And so if we change our velocity by that much in one frame, this missile would look like it instantaneously turned. But we don't want to do that. We want to limit the length of this green vector, how much the current velocity can bend towards the desired velocity. And that's what our steer force variable that we set did. The longer the higher that value, the longer this vector can be, so the quicker the current velocity can change to the desired velocity. And so we can make a function for that. We'll call this seek. So first let's set the steer, we'll just call this how much we're going to turn, to zero. So that by default, we're not turning. Now if we have a target, then we're going to set that to whatever acceleration we need to pull our velocity towards our desired velocity, limited by the given steer force. 
So let's calculate what the desired is. The desired velocity is the target's position minus our position, which gives us that vector, and we want to normalize that. I'll zoom in the code here. So we want to normalize that times the speed because we want that to be, so that's our, des our desired is our maximum speed towards the target. That's what we want. And then we'll see how close we can get to that by calculating the steer force, which is desired minus velocity, just like in the diagram we looked at a moment ago. And we'll normalize that and we'll multiply it by the steer force. Again, which limited its length. And then we're going to return that value. So note that if we didn't have a target, we're returning a steer force of zero. So we'll continue to be a dumb bullet that moves in a straight line if we don't have a target assigned. This is nice because then you can reuse this code for multiple projectiles in your game and just give it a target if you wanted to have one. And then in our physics process, we just need to apply that acceleration. So we're going to say acceleration plus equals whatever gets returned from seek. And that's pretty much it. Let's take a look at what the result looks like. So we're flying towards our turrets right now. Now you see them bending to, t to come towards me. That is all it takes. And just for fun, here it is with a little more flare where I've taken the missiles and added some particle smoke and a little explosion animation when they impact me or when they run out, they'll explode. All right, so I hope this was helpful to you in your own projects. Please feel free to leave your questions and comments in the comment section below and I will see you in a future video. This tutorial is part of my new Godot Recipes website. The goal is to collect all the best tips and lessons to help make you a better Godot developer. If you like this video, I hope you'll go and check out the site. And make sure to hit subscribe so you'll be notified whenever I release new videos. Thanks for watching.